current policies will be considered unsuitable. But beware of mimickers like neck shadow, skin hold, sister fissures. This can mimic pump purposes and we, we, we can be making a mistake in uh, reporting the X-ray. Let's look at these uh, two X-rays. The first one on the left, uh, the arrow is pointing to linear and coarse shadows in the right upper zone. This is typical right apical fibrosis. So definitely this will not be suitable. Now, how do we determine that there is a fibrosis there? They are, if you can see on the, on the left hand side, there are also linear shadows. However, these linear shadows are just blood vessels, they are full of blood vessels. But, uh, but then compare the one on the right, they are, so of course, they are lean, uh, upper lobe blood vessels. At the same time, <clears throat> there are also other linear shadows and some are other cause. So these are fibrosis. And uh, we, can, we have difficulty trying to make comparison. Just block off the middle part here mentally and then just compare the, the portion of the lung film on the right and portion of the lung film on the left. And I'm sure you will you, you agree with me that there are a lot more shadows here on the right in the right upper zone. So this is right apical fibrosis, and definitely this will not be suitable. The image on the left here is showing a similar finding, rather linear and cross shadows as well in the left upper zone. So this will be left apical fibrosis, and both cases will not be suitable for employment in Malaysia. Pulmonary fibrosis can be obvious. For example, in this case, can see these linear shadows uh, in the right upper zone, linear shadows in the left upper zone, even the hilum, uh, both hilum are actually elevated because when you have fibrosis, it pulls up the normal tissue. So both hilum are elevated. And look at the diaphragm down at the bottom, there's plenty on the right CP angle, there's tenting on the diaphragm, there's plenty on the left CP angle. So this is a very gross example of uh, primary fibrosis. But sometimes fibrosis can be ambiguous or subtle. And that's when you really need to do, to have an extra view to be confident in your diagnosis. Let, let's look at this PA view on the one on the left here. Uh, the toward the right upper zone, there are loose, what looks like coarse shadows in the right upper zone. And compare that to the left, it's just not as busy as the one on the right. So, but then you just can't be certain. So you like to, uh, to have an extra view, what view would you have? considering these are in the apex, so it will be an apical view. And look at this apical view, now you can see these extra shadows in the right upper zone. So this is again right apical fibrosis. I'd like to uh, make a suggestion here that uh, for best practices, for best practice, when the issue is done, ask the worker to wait in the waiting room and uh, do not let the worker go, go, go back first. Go in the waiting room and then the radiographer well, uh, it's always routine that the grapher will check for technical fault, but in this situation, the grapher must also check for suspicious pathology. Make it a habit. Look for a technical fault and then look for suspicious pathology. And if there is, then alert the doctor and ask about whether to repeat the X-ray or to do any any additional views or not. So the uh, and then X-ray can be repeated immediately while the worker is still in the clinic. So here, the doctor and the doctor work as a team. If you have to let the, the worker to go home, to go out first, and by the time you realize that there's something that you need to do, then it will always be difficult to get them back. Look at this particular x-ray. It is like apical fibrosis. Can you have to shade the, uh, shade the shadow here? The shadow here is, uh, there's a linear shadow in the right upper zone, yes, but then, uh, just follow the shadow, it goes up all the way to the lower neck here. And in fact, in, in, uh, lower down, it goes along the clavicle. So this is actually soft tissue shadow at the lower neck. Or to be more exact, this is the sternocleidomastoid shadow. How do you confirm it? Apical view. When you do an apical view, there is nothing in the lung field here. So this is uh, confirm, com com confirming that this shadow is not in the lab. The hair, the hair is always, hair is always a good mimicker. Uh, look at this one, you can see the uh, curvilinear shadows here, multiple curvilinear shadows here, but then when you look at them carefully, you see it goes up here, then it goes that way. And this is a female patient, 
if you can see the breast shape, right? it must be a female patient. And then uh, what you see on from both sides, the hair shape is coming in, and here is where the, they tie the, the hair, and then you can see the ponytail coming down here. So this is a shadow casting, uh, um, a shadow on our uh, hair, casting a shadow on our chair, sex ray, mimicking pathology. Same thing here, you can see curvilinear shadow, that is the image on the right. You can see the curvilinear shadow here. You can appreciate this is the rib, and this is the rib, but in between the rib, there are curvilinear shadow, but you follow this curvilinear shadow, it goes up all the way outside the chest. So this is, again, uh, let me put this away. You can, this is, again, hair shadow, but the long hair here, uh, curvilinear, uh, making it inside fibrosis. So do not mistake fibrosis for, do not mistake hair for fibrosis. This is a two chest x-ray, done on two different dates, right, in the same clinic, and uh, they are of the same person. Let's look at the lower neck here. When you look at the lower neck here, the, uh, again, it's a female patient. Uh, lower neck here, it looks like there's some shadow here, mimicking thyroid enlargement, probably mimicking a thyroid goiter. So could this be thyroid goiter? And when you ask this x-ray, or this case was repeated, then the and the hair was asked to be uh, pulled away, then you don't see that same shadow anymore. So this is hair shadow mimicking thyroid goiter. Could you get an image on the left? Could this be this uh, blobby thing here? Could this be uh, right epic fibrosis? The apex is uh, blocked by this thing, and then, but then it all extends out into the lower neck. So this is un unlikely to be in the lung field. Then an apical view was done and the, there is nothing in the, ap in the apex here. So this is probably hair shadow again, again, female patient. So probably it's hair shadow again. Uh, once you have done an apical view, throwing away the, any, any, any structures outside the chest. So the lung field is very clear. This guy uh, is a guy. Uh, don't see a breast shadow anymore, so this must be a guy. What is the opacity in the right apex here? When you look at the right apex here, look at the, the space in between the first, uh, the first tip, the clavicle, and the, the spine. You can see uh, some shadows here, but the one corresponding one on the left-hand side is very clear. So is there a right apical fibrosis here? The uh, actually was then repeated, and then no more shadow. So what happened was this is so uh, this is so hair, and the uh, the the hair was jutting over the lung, uh, all over the lung, such that it can it cast a shadow on our X-ray. But then on repeat X-ray, this hair was uh, pulled away, and you don't see any more shadows here. So this is again hair mimicking apical fibrosis.